For those of you who have subscribed recently, welcome, first of all. Uh, I am working on more documentaries in a very similar vein to the F-Zero doc. Uh, they do take a little bit longer to make, so please bear with me. Oh boy, the last few updates to Halo MCC have seriously expanded the options for aiming, most notably and most recently, the toggle between classic and modern aiming styles. These are seriously welcome additions, but some of the terms might be a little confusing at first glance, so I thought I'd run through the way each setting changes the way that you aim. First of all, the stick registers as a set of coordinates, X and Y, ranging from, let's say, minus 100 to 100. The dead center of the stick, neutral, is 0, 0. But the stick sensor is very sensitive. When you let go of the stick, it usually continues to register low values. This would cause drift, so we add a dead zone to tell the game to ignore the input when the stick is in neutral. The dead zone setting has now been split into two, axial and radial dead zones. Bear with me, it sounds more complicated than it actually is. Axial dead zone draws these two zones onto the stick's axes, one horizontal and one vertical. If the stick coordinates are in the center where both zones overlap, then the stick won't register at all. If the coordinates are in only one of these zones, say the horizontal zone, the game completely ignores any vertical input. This gives the effect of guiding the stick towards the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. If you've played Black Ops 4 on console, you might have noticed how the menu cursor is very difficult to move perfectly horizontally or vertically, and that's because it has no axial dead zone to guide it. You may think you're holding the stick straight, but you're always going to be slightly diagonal. Compare that to the character select screens in Smash Brothers, which have big axial dead zones. Early Halo games had huge axial dead zones, but the bigger it is, the further you have to tilt before the stick registers, and the more it's like you're aiming with a pressure-sensitive D-pad and not an analog stick. The square-shaped central dead zone also means that diagonal tilts register later than horizontal and vertical tilts. Radial dead zone is similar, but simpler. This setting draws a circle around the center of the stick. Radial dead zone, as in pertaining to a radius. If the chords are inside the circle, they get set to 0, 0, the very center. It also has the benefits that the end of the dead zone is equidistant at every angle, as opposed to the square axial dead zone where you'll need to tilt further diagonally. However, there is no cardinal guiding, so it behaves like the menu in Black Ops 4. You can set either dead zone anywhere between 0, turning the dead zone off, and 20, which is more or less when the stick is at 20% tilt. My graphs are all made in edit, they're only roughly accurate, but if you want to see a live graph of dead zones in action, check out a Tunnel to Hackers channel, link below. So which should you use? Really, it's entirely up to you. There is no one best setting, but here are my guidelines. If you're used to the original games, you may prefer more axial dead zone than default. You'll have to tilt the stick further before it starts listening, but it helps guide horizontal and vertical motion. I'll get into this later, but if you're using classic aiming, axial is probably the way to go. Classic aiming has very poor diagonal handling, so you may find the stronger cardinal guiding to be helpful. With radial dead zone, you're more free to aim at any angle. Personally, I prefer to have the barest minimum of dead zone. You can find out how little you need by lowering the dead zone then gently nudging the stick in each direction and seeing if your view drifts when you let go. The minimum setting for axial dead zone may be different to the minimum for radial. My stick drifts diagonally down and right, the square axial dead zone catches it, but the circular radial dead zone won't. It also means that if I physically tilt the stick directly downwards, the sensor thinks I'm tilting slightly to the right, so it may be worth using a little of both dead zones. 
The radial dead zone is just big enough to prevent drift at neutral, and the smaller axial dead zone gives a little bit of assistance in guiding the stick when I need it, without getting in the way of diagonal aiming. However, it does seem as if having both axial and radial dead zone on at the same time causes the radial dead zone to be larger than it should be, depending on how much axial you have. So if you're using both, you might want to lower the radial a little to compensate. Next up, aim acceleration. Here we go. I have brought up acceleration zones before, you might want to check out the last video with aiming issues explained for more on the topic, but in summation, the stick has an acceleration zone around the edge. The point being that when you tap the stick fully, it means that you're probably trying to turn around rather than aim precisely, and so the game boosts your turn speed while you're in this zone. If you tap the stick horizontally and then gradually ease off, you'll find the biting point for this zone to be around 95-99% to tilt, basically all the way. This applies to both axes, with the vertical acceleration zone being a little weaker, except for Halo CE with classic aiming, which has no vertical acceleration at all. When you enter an XL zone, you don't hit maximum turn speed immediately. Instead, your turn rate ramps up over about a second. The lock acceleration setting adjusts the time it takes to reach max speed. On a low setting, it takes you longer to turn. On a high setting, you get there much faster. It doesn't change the max speed itself, but unless you regularly stand in place spinning around, it might as well. As an aside, when you set your aim sensitivity, don't set it according to how fast you want to turn. Your sensitivity is for precise aiming, for scoped aiming at heads with a pistol, the BR and the sniper rifle, and for aiming with the AR and other non-scoped weapons. Set your sensitivity according to that, and then set your look acceleration for big sweeping turns. Your precision is more important than your turn rate, and you can adjust your turn rate with a look acceleration setting without affecting precision. In Halo CE 2 Classic and 3, the acceleration zone spikes inwards to about half tilt in the diagonals. This is legacy behaviour carried over from the original releases on Xbox and 360, it's always been there, but I reckon the less precise controllers and huge axial dead zones probably masked its impact. Again, check out the last video on the matter for much more detail. If you're wondering what the difference is between classic and modern aiming, this is the biggest factor. Classic aiming style is identical to the original releases, barring the adjustable dead zones and look acceleration. Modern aiming style completely removes these diagonal acceleration spikes I've been moaning about, making for much more consistent aim sensitivity in all directions. Unless you've been playing the Bungie games daily since release, I highly recommend you use Modern over Classic. Classic is still intact for those that prefer it, but Modern is more consistent and much, much smoother in the diagonals. Give it a go. For those of you who are used to Classic aiming style, I'm looking into making a video on which settings most closely match the original games, but for now, turn off Radial Dead Zone and set Axial Dead Zone to max. If you're interested, here are the settings I use to get you started, but play around with it and find what feels best for you. Halo 2 Classic and Anniversary use the same settings, so I just set Halo 4 to match, since it and Halo 2 Anniversary share the same engine. If you want to play around with the graphs I've been using in this video, there's a link below. It has sliders for axial and radial dead zone. You can set them between 0 and 20, same as in the MCC, so you can visualise what the settings actually do to your controller. Check it out. Huge thanks to 343 for the fantastic modern aiming controls and for your continued support of the new MCC. Give it a go, try out modern aiming, and see how it feels for you. My name is Stefan. Thank you so much for watching.